Namaste. Hello everyone. Hope uh, you all are staying healthy and happy. So today we are in this practice, in this lovely harbour view in the Peninsula Hotel Chimsai Choi. So do visit it if you get a time often. So let's have a simple practice today. It's going to be a pretty basic uh, way of moving. There will be always some options offered, whether you are an intermediate student or if you're looking for something which is more physically relaxing. It's going to be around 40-45 minutes practice, followed by some Shavasana. Also, please feel free to ask any questions which might pop up for the practice or anything related to yoga during the practice itself or towards the end. I'll address those questions at the end. So let's get started. Sitting nice and tall, let's set the intention of the practice by closing our eyes. Mind you recite on the breath without altering its flow or changing its rhythm. Letting the breath to sink in deep to every cells of the body to relax inside out. Developing the mind at a state of comfort, a state of joy, of just being present over here, and taking this moment to acknowledge the gift presented by God to all these human beings and all the lives around us. through this joy, through this energy, trying to share our love and compassion to the people in need at this stage that we all are in. Join the palms together in front of your heart. Take a deeper inhale in now. Exhale, relax the body. Inhale in again. Exhale, relax the mind. Allow it to get nourished with the breath. Time inhale in slow and deep. Exhale to nourish the soul. Feeling now the soul, the body and the mind are together with a sense of being present. The gratitude on heart gently open our eyes. Namaste. Let us come into a simple cross-legged position to begin. We're working with some spinal energy now, so ground in those sitting bones, press the palms on top of your thighs. On the next inhale, let the ribs expand out forwards. Draw the shoulder blades back and raise up the head creating a gentle back bending stretch. Then exhale round the back and bring the chin down into the sternum bone. Your arms might be helpful to try and get some more extra flexion on the back. Repeat it, inhale, open up, expand, reaching up the head. Exhale, round and 
Inhale, open up. Squeeze the shoulder blades so the shoulder heads are going further back to expand the chest. Exhale, round in. Couple more. Inhale, expand, open up. Exhale, flex inwards. One more time, inhale, stretch out. Exhale, fold in. Feel the range of stretch and energy on the back of the spine, all the way at the back of the neck. Then come back up, inhale to a neutral spine. Now have your left palm position on the outer right thigh and your right palm at the back of the hips. Inhale, lengthen here. Exhale, we twist back, holding it for a few seconds. See that the sitting bones are equally grounded. There's a constant approach of lengthening of the spine. The twist is always the max. It feels great when the spine is as a one single line. It's a unit. One more exhale. See if you can add on some more onto the upper back, letting the shoulders to go further behind. And then inhale, come back to center. We switch side. Right palm to the outside of the left thigh. Left hand at the back, inhale, length. Exhale, a slow twist. I personally prefer to have the practice when it's gentle and slow to just close my eyes so that the mind can relate into the body sensitivity more easily. But this is your personal preference and how it feels good for you. Also, right now, it's not a bad idea to keep the eyes open as I'm looking out through the harbor view. One more breath, kind of being a bit distracted here. All right, come back to the center now. Let's come forwards into all fours position. So let's work onto the wrist points. We don't have to exactly get those perpendicular lines. We can modify it slightly depending on the necessity. Tuck the toes under. Rotate the palms backwards, so now the fingertips are facing behind towards the knees. Inhale, open up the shoulders back, and then exhale, sink back, letting the wrist to stretch. Check that the heels of the palms are firmly grounding down. You might also want to stay a little bit high if you have got sensitive wrist. And then inhale, come back to center. Reaching the hands forward, and this time, Supinate the hands, that means the top of the palms touches down the floor, the fingers still back to the knees. We start with the right palm and then on the exhale, sing back, stretching out the wrist of the right. Mm, quite uh, natural for the elbows to try and have a bend, so be aware that you're working to keep the arms straight. That would reach onto the deeper lines of those forearm muscle groups. And then come back, center, inhale. We switch, doing it with the left side, and then sinking it back. Letting the fingers to feel soft. And checking those elbows one more time. One more breath. And then back to the center. From there, walk your arms out on the side so your fingers are almost outside of the mat. Take a breath in. Exhale and send your energy and weight towards the right side. So along with the wrist, this time your shoulder also starts to take some load. Come back, center, and help. Go down to the left side on the exhale. So obviously your left knee would start to feel heavier compared to the right, and that's perfectly fine. One more time, center, exhale. Try and go further into your right side. Almost feeling that your left palm has a negligible contact with earth. Inhale, and then exhale going down to your left side. Softening the right palm, sink a bit more into the side of your left. Good, come back. Reach your palms back to the starting position. Let's come up in a downward facing dog from here. Let's take a few breaths, wrap those triceps underneath, create some space across the shoulders. Let those legs feel light. So if you are someone who is having a tighter hamstring, do a couple of walk. Let us want to keep a static form if you feel the resistance is limited. It always works good for me when I walk. 
and then trying a slight anterior tilt with the pelvis, that means the tailbone wants to reach upwards towards the ceiling. It's a very subtle move, which actually energizes the length of the back of the thighs, and the calves a lot more. So if I'm rounding in my back, it's a lot easier to have my heels down. However, if I'm looking for a greater stretch, I want to elevate those sitting bones upward, and that draws my heels up. Now I have to put in some greater effort to try and get the heels down with lots of stretch at the back of my legs. One more breath here. Right, bring yourself forwards into a plank. So have your shoulders directly in the line of the wrist. Bring the feet together. And we want to keep that straight line to engage the core for the very first time today. So have your shoulders rechecking that plane. Instead of sagging down those uh, upper back region, I want you to try and push away from the floor. So try and have that elevation around the upper back, a high plank position. Engage those legs. Scoop the tailbone down. That starts engaging the core. Let's be here for just another couple of more breaths to get that activation done. If your wrist feels good, you might also want to come more higher on the ball of the foot, maybe even tippy toes to create a stronger wrist flexion. And just last breath to go. And then go back up and down and facing dog. Ah, take a big inhale. Sink into your dog, exhale. Inhale, shift forwards into plank. Exhale, bring knees, chest, and chin down. Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhale, unfold in Bhujangasana. Choose your own height, which works. Pelvis stays grounded. Shoulders are rolled back. If the back needs more time to go higher up, we'll give it so. If you feel a greater release, feels good at this point of time, go ahead and try straightening those arms a little more. Noticing that your pelvis still stays grounded. One more breath. Nice. Tuck the toes under, push back up and down and face and talk. And from there, let's work on uplifting the tempo of our practice, bringing the feet together. Step the right foot forwards in between the palms. Check the perpendicular line between the right knee and heel. And we are now coming into Anjani Asana. So bring your hands up on the hips line. Let's uh, pulsate this Anjani Asana a couple of times. So keeping the back leg straight or maybe slightly bent if you have got tighter hip flexor, you want to sink down the butts until the front thigh gets parallel to the floor. And then inhale, straighten those legs to the point it's just having that engagement of the quads. Not completely locked. Exhale, sink down. Inhale, straighten up. A few more of that. Exhale, three. Inhale, lift. Exhale, four. Inhale, lift. Exhale, five. You're doing ten of that. Inhale, lift. Exhale, six. Inhale, seven. Inhale. The tailbone lengthening down eight so constantly working with the hip flexor extent nine extent ten extent sink down for the last round and hold it for a couple of breaths modify the hands press them on top of your thigh i want you to lean the body forwards and down until the torso comes parallel to the floor so having the palms as a point of resistance takes the load partially away from the quads, but if you're feeling strong today, bring the palms in prayer. A little more strong if the hands are extended out in the line of the ears. If you stay there for five, draw the navel in to feel the connection with the core and the torso. Back leg strong for two more. And bring the palms down to the floor. Set your left knee down. Walk the right foot out to the right side and replace the right palm inside. We're going for a lizard lunge. So let the back knee stay down to the floor as we come down on our elbows and simply hold this practice. 
And if you need to stay up on your palms, just because the resistance is more, just be there and that's okay to choose options. I always tell my students, options helps us to understand the quality of a particular posture much easily. And that's when we are actually linked. And that is what yoga is all about. Same there. Checking your options of picking the back knee up, maybe extending the arms even forward. So you're an intermediate student, feel free to go ahead. One more breath. Good. Walking back up, tuck the back toes under, step back in down dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Exhale, choose a chaturanga or drop knee, chest, chin down. Inhale, cobra or an up dog. Exhale, push back, down dog. Bringing the feet together, let's go. Set your left foot forward. Right angle, left knee to the heel, back leg straight and strong. Bring the hands on top of your hips, get the spine long. Lengthen the tailbone, draw the navel in. Send the right hip bone forward. Now let's go. Extend your front leg and exhale, sink it down. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, sink. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, sink. Inhale. Exhale. That's number four. Inhale, should be four. Exhale, five. Inhale. Exhale, six. Inhale. Exhale, seven. Lower, deeper. Inhale. Exhale, eight. Inhale. Nine. Inhale. Ten. Inhale, and exhale to hold this posture. Bring the palms on top of your left thigh. Sink the body 45 degrees down. If you have to readjust the width of the legs, go ahead for that. Keep it low. Hands as a resistance to make it easy. Or palms in prayer, or extend up. According to the increasing level of intensity of first, second, and third position. A couple more breaths for five. three more keep lengthening engage those upper back muscles lift the hands higher up last and relax the palms down set your back knee down walk the front foot out to the left side get the palm inside stay on the palm or go down into your lizard choosing a deeper form often I'm being asked that is it preferred to have my knees hugging in or taking the knees outwards? And there is no right or wrong answer for this. When you are keeping the knees hugging in, the range of stretch goes more down into the hamstrings. If you're tight around this region, it would be much more obvious to feel the stretch here. However, when you open out the knees, the stretch starts shifting into the inner groins. So basically wherever you're tight, that's where the point which is going to be felt more. Go ahead for your option, back knee up or stretching the hands forward for the last couple of reps left here. One more. Good, tuck the toes under, lift up the back leg, Step back and down dog, reset your hands. Inhale, plank, inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Bring your knees down to the floor. Cross the legs, sit back. Let's work out with some core. So to prepare the core, followed by letting the arms to start doing some extra work. So we would lie down. I want your arms to vertically face up towards the ceiling so we are not really using the palms to take support for this reverse crunching position as you are doing it with the bend knee. We'll be doing 10 of that. So have a quick look first. As you exhale, you scoop up the tailbone with the head lifted up. And as you inhale, just relax down. If you have sensitive neck, you can do the entire practice with the head resting down. 
Ready? Let's go. Exhale one. Inhale down. Two. Down. Three. Down. Four. Down. Five. Down. You're reaching the dead one up. Six. Down. Seven. Down. Not knee to the chest. Eight. Down. But reaching upwards. Nine. Down. Ten. Hold it for five. Four. Three. Let's extend the hands up. Three. Two. Crunch in fully. Nice and high. And relax. Ground the feet down. Take a deep breath in. Let's challenge the intensity going into a next level. So this time, pretty much similar except that as we extend and reach up, we straighten the legs and lower it all the way down. So same hands position, ready. Exhale, crunch up, lift the legs all the way down to 10 degree, and inhale, bring it back in. Exhale, reach up and go down. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, lower it down slowly. Inhale, tailbone up. Exhale, straighten and lower down. Inhale, tailbone up. Exhale, straighten and lower down. Four more. Exhale, reach up and go back down. Reach up, extend, exhale, low. Inhale, reach up, extend, exhale, low. Two more. Reach up, extend, lower down. One more. Reach up, extend, lower down and hold this for 10. Extend the arms forward. If you'd like to add challenge, bring the arms with the ears for five, four, no gaps in, three, two, two, stay up for one last and relax it down. <sighs> Let the head feel grounded fully. Let the belly soften. Let the shoulders soften. Take two deep breaths before starting to move again. All right, hug the legs, rock yourself up, step back and down dog, please. Moving on, bringing those feet together. You raise the right leg up, keep the hip squared. It's not a split up there, it's more of the glutes. Shift and plank. Bring the right knee into the right elbow. Hold this for five. Intermediate students might switch that into a Kundanyasana. Two, remember not to sink down into those scapula, but try and press away from the floor. And then push back in a three leg dog, inhale. Repeat that, exhale, come forward one more time. Right knee to your right upper arm, stay or modify it. Shift a little forward so you plunge the shoulders more beyond the point of the wrist, towards the fingertips. And then go back up, inhale. Nice and strong leg. Exhale, come forward to plank. Bring the right knee to your left elbow this time. So it's a cross using those obliques, modifying maybe. Maybe staying there. And then go back, inhale. That's a challenging one. Exhale, come forward. Right knee to your left elbow. If it, that's too much, just hover in with the knee at the center of the chest. It doesn't have to come very close. And we'll step it back, down dog. Ah. Two deep breaths before we switch. Joining the legs together. Let's do it again. Left leg goes up, inhale. More glutes. Keep that upper foot active. You can point it, flex it, see what feels good for you. Come into plank. Left knee, left elbow. Stay, or asana too. Arms are super straight. There's a tendency of bending elbows, so check that out. Push back, three leg. Exhale, forward, plank, reach in, plunge forwards, arms straight, neck is long, 
Push back, three leg. Plank, left knee, right elbow. Minimize the movement of your back foot, still on the ball of the foot. Push back. One more time, plank to your right. Reach up higher, in towards your elbows, to the armpits. And push back. And relax the foot down. Step your right foot in between palms. The left foot follows. Separate the feet at the hips width. Inhale, lend it up. Exhale, fold. Wrap the arms behind the back. Switch out the shoulders for a while. Bend the knees if necessary. Release arms. Joining the feet together. Come up in Utkatasana. Inhale. And straighten the legs. Thumbs in prayer. Exhale. Rest your arms, take two deep breaths. All right, let's work on with some leg balancing poses. Also good to get some heat developed on our hamstring. So grounding onto the right foot, this mat is quite thick, so I'll take a step out. Feels much more stable and we're on the floor. So lift your left knee up, three fingers to the big toe, right hand is on the right hip. Now begin to extend the leg. If you have limitation on the hamstring, probably keep the knee bent slightly, and that's good. But those of us can, extend out full. Open it out to the side. Standing tall, strong bottom leg. Bend the knee in, come into a tree. Now set your left foot on the inner right thigh. Reach the arms overhead. You can keep same hands position or take your left arm down and go in for a cow face. It's okay to fall off at a balancing pose, not a big idea. And just get into resetting yourself back to the center once you get back up. Last breath. Release the hands in prayer and relax it down. Let's switch the side now. So I'll be grounding on my left foot. Three fingers to my right big toe, left hand on the hip, reach out. Join the navel, stabilizes the torso, bottom leg strong. And then let's open it out to the side. Bend it in, or a tree. Prayer. Over or wrap it back. Arms in prayer and release control. It. Great done. Let's carry on for our final part. Raise arms up, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, step your left foot back. Set the left knee down to the floor. Straighten the right leg. Now notice that you're having a perpendicular left femur bone. So from the hip to the knee, it's one line. I'm gonna draw your right hip backwards to align the hips. And that will increase the stretch in the hamstring. Flex the foot, take an inhale here. Exhale and fold into a half split. 
Then if you want to avail a greater range, go ahead, slide down, see if you would like to go into a Hanuman Asana, or the existing position feels nice to be in and relax there. Two more breaths. Good. Lift the torso halfway up. We bend the front leg and we walk the right foot into the left palm for a pigeon. So set your right heel, first of all, pretty close into the pelvis. That will give room for the body to stay upright. If you've got any sensation around on your knees, it is suggested to use a folded towel, a blanket, or a block to sit higher up. Take a breath, lengthen, inhale, and exhale, fold forwards, and just relax. Let's take a bit longer time to settle ourselves down here. Good time to come back into the breath rhythm if it's heavy right now. See so if you wish to reset the position of the right foot when it starts to feel less intense on the hip stretch. Other variations are also welcome. So choose that as your own part of the practice which makes you feel more complete physically. But let the mind stay steady with the sense of the body. Maybe even extending those arms forward which can assist us to sink low. Couple more breaths. Walk back up, press back into sitting, step back in down dog. Switch, left foot forward. Right knee down, straighten the left leg. Check the femur's line, Keep the front leg straight, flex the foot, pull back the femur bone. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Into Hanuman Asana if you wish to, or keep that gentle practice. Last few breaths. Lift halfway, inhale. Shift the weight to the front foot as it bends. Walk the foot to the right palm. And get seated. And keep the heel close to start the practice. Also good to always recheck the back leg, its orientation. So having the arms to lift the spine, taking a gentle arch here, inhale. And exhale, walk down, bend forward. Go ahead for your own modification. Choose options based on your necessity. When we are talking about uh, how many breaths we are holding on to every poses, I want you to notice that when you're starting up the practice at the early stage, the breath might be a three seconds inhale, three second exhale. So in a minute approximately, we take how many around 10 breaths. However, when you're doing those challenging practices physically, the frequency of the breath increases because the length of every respiration would decrease. Might be one and a half to two seconds inhale, same for exhale. So notice how that change happens as the posture differs. And that is also a personal realization of being aware of how the breath is transforming. For here, another two more. Walk back up. Step back, down dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale, going down in Chaturanga. We hold this last one for five, 
four, shift forward, three, hugging the arms, nice, two, avoid letting the shoulders drop, one, and plank. Set your knees down to the floor. Open up the calves around the sitting bones. Sit tall, take a deep inhale. Wrap your left arm down and on just in case you haven't uh, tried doing that calf face on the previous three, there's another opportunity. Right hand goes from the top, grip in. Use a towel if the arms are in front out together. And if this is your second time doing it, try to have the grip more firm. Lifting the upper elbows backwards stretches the triceps more. Sending the lower shoulder backwards stretches the medial and interior heads of the deltoid muscle. switch side wrapping the right arm back walking up take the left hand from pop grip in if you're a right-handed person probably this would be your tightest side of the two and as always again welcome to use props to help out Elbows pushes back for the upper arm. Lower shoulder goes back. One more breath. Good. And gentle and a slow release. Stretch the legs out forward. Straighten them, engage the quads and release them a couple of times. To reset the position of the kneecap after we have been sitting in that Virasana hero pose for a while. Let's come into a Baddha Konasana, that's a butterfly pose. So bring the sole of the feet together, reach the heels in. And on the deepest position of this posture is when you are shins are exactly in one plane because that's when the knees goes out to the farthest possible distance from each other so let's have the knees to tap in a couple of times creating that pulsating movement it helps to release the tension around the groin before we get into a deeper version of the pose and then see the motion let the knees sink down, inhale, lengthen the back up, exhale, begin to bend forward. The beauty of our yoga practice is that it doesn't really matter how deep we are, but it works equally for every body types. Someone who is super flexible can go all the way down. Someone who is not will stay probably one fourth range down compared to the full. And for both of these two practitioners, the benefits are exactly the same. Another breath. Inhale, slowly come back up. Hug the legs, exhale. We'll take a deep breath in. Please lie down first. Bring the heels into your hips. So let's do a Setu Bandhasana, also called a Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, because Traditionally, we used to do this posture entering from a shoulder stand, that's why. So, let's move on with the hips. You can choose any versions of 
the backward bending. We'll just be keeping it simple for the beginner's side point of view. So I have the hands resting next to the heel. Push down and reach up the hips. Now scoop those triceps underneath and the scapula comes close to each other. Interlock the fingers underneath the butts. Send them down and use the legs to reach up the hips. Intermediate practitioners might as well want to go for a deeper form. Choosing a wheel, so if that's necessary, do it. Try hugging those knees towards the midline. At the same time, notice that your hips aren't really sinking too low. One more breath up. And then relax it back down. Bring the sole of the feet together, rest in a butterfly. We have one more round to go. Take a couple of breaths. Okay, let's go again. Ground the feet parallel to each other. Palms come close to the feet. Press down into the ball of the feet and the edges. Reach up and get the scapula inwards. Interlock the fingers. Or maybe even this time, you can try getting the palms to support your sacrum. This version is more about adding up the range of motion on the spine. Unlike the last one, it's to strengthen the glutes on the back more. So if you are someone who knows that your back is not as strong, probably the first version would be the best choice. Wheel again as your next option, that's necessary. Hug those knees in, keep those feet planted, grounding firm. One more breath. And then gentle and slow, release the hips down. Reach out those scapula, give a hug to the legs. Roll side to side a few times. Now bring yourself into a happy baby. Modify that by lifting your tailbone upwards so the knees are sinking down. And that creates a nice stretch around the lumbar area. It feels great after just finishing off a back bend. This modification from that classical form of our happy baby, Ananda Balasana. And gently roll the lumbar area down till the sacrum. And once the whole spine touches the floor, let the knees come further down into the ribs and towards the earth. Plug those shoulder blades down into the floor. Nice. Now let's take a twist. We'll be going into eagle leg. So wrap your right leg on top. If you have got a double lock, that's fine. If it doesn't work that way, you might want to ground down the foot. Use the hand to lock in. I've got big legs, so it doesn't work all the time for me. But again, it's your choice. Even if you're not having the double knot, you're still fine. You're receiving a good twist. Turning the torso to the right side. Head to the right side. And back to center. Switch sides, so taking the left leg over the top. Getting the knot and letting the knees Come down to the right as the head turns to the left. There's two different ways of doing this pose. First to let the knee fully come down and then to stretch out the body on the side. This is more into the obliques. So have a check. There's no wrong or right. It is just different way of approaching a particular posture changes the manifestation of 
sense of that muscle group into the body, linking in further muscle groups or another muscle group. The strings are the best thing to finish off the practice after doing all those mobility exercises of the spine because twist helps to intervertebral discs, those shelly in between those vertebras to reset themselves. And then come back to center. Give a gentle hug to your legs. Take a deep breath in. Sit up. So let's close our eyes for a moment. Connecting with the body. Accepting whatever sense it offers to us. Lightness, maybe some fatigueness. It's all an experience. Join the palms together. So to the Almighty, we have our faith, our belief. Let's take a moment's silence to pray for the universal peace, happiness and health. So I would leave you for your Shavasana, uh, suggestion is to do it at least 5 to 10 minutes, longer is better. And also uh, create opportunities for yourself to continue the practices, this was one of the basic ones. This probably can also be taken as a warm up for continuing the next few minutes of your cell practice if your energy provides you with that. So. Thank you once again, and it was lovely to have all of you as a part of today's practice. My vows. Namaste.